Okay, so Erev Yom Kippur. We have few mitzvot that obligated to Erev Yom Kippur. This year I'm talking about Friday morning. Anyone know what's so important on Erev Yom Kippur? There's few important mitzvot that we should do. So the first mitzvah that we obligated to do, Rabotai, and you have to remember that, and that's the most important thing that we obligated to eat and to drink. Obligated, Rabotai. When I say obligated, people obligated to eat and drink as much as they can this coming Friday. Not only that, that Talmideh Hachamim, that study Torah all day, Hazal tell us that they're allowed to study less as long as they eat and they drink. From here we see how much that mitzvah, how important that mitzvah. Because usually we say, Talmud Torah can negate kulam. That means that studying of Torah is the highest level that everyone obligated to do it. But when it's come to Erev Yom Kippur, everyone obligated to eat and to drink. That's number one. We're going to explain why. We're going to get to it. We're going to go through the Gmarot. I'm going to explain through the Gmarot why it's so important. Then we bring the opinion of Hazal, what Hazal say about it. Also, the other thing that we also not allowed to do on Erev Yom Kibur, Lit'anot. There is a custom that when there is a your side, the son, the brother, the children, usually fast on that day. If that's the yacht side of their parents, their relatives, they fast. On Erev Yom Kippur, we're not allowed to fast. The second thing is kaparot. Everyone know what is kaparot? Yes. Baruch Hashem. Chicken. Okay, there's two minhagim on it. We'll see. So according to Philip, it's chicken. It's not so simple, the chicken. We'll see where is that minhag come. This minhag of the kaparot to take a chicken and to turn it around the head three times, okay? And while you're doing it, you have to say, zo kaparati, zo halifati, you know what I'm saying? This min had originally been mentioned in Shut Geonim. Shut Rav Aigaon mentioned it, he bring it. Rabbi Notray uh, Gaon also bringing it. And later on, it's moved to the Ahronim that speak about it, the Ramban, Rabbi Moshe ben Nachmani, the Rashba speak about it, he bring in this minag. And then the Ahronim. Ahronim was the Marana Bet Yosef bringing it, you can see it in a Mishnah Burra, also the Rabbi Moshe Isserlish, the Ramah bringing it. And they tell us that there is this minag. Although today, today, the most common kaparot to do Please sit here. If you don't mind, I can see you. You know, I love to see you. Today, the most common thing to do kaparot is with money. Before we get to the value, we'll explain why. In the olden days, they used to do kaparot with the chicken, and they used to take a shohat, and it used to be a lot of stress Erev Yom Kippur to start shechting. And if the shohet is not 100% know how to check his knife, and there's a little bit of a thing, all of that, all of that shahita is psula, and then we have a problem. Therefore, they tell us to avoid all of that. Do it with money. Who's still doing it today? The Sfaradim have a minhag to do it. The Hasidim have a minhag to do it, the Hasidim. Most of the Hasidut do it, nachon? They agree with the Torah Academy on Friday. That's morning. Hasidim, that's Hasidim, yeah. that's Hasidut. We're not speaking only about Hasideh Habad or Hasideh Breslev. The Hasidim in general, they do it. And why they do it dafka with an animal or with a chicken, let's be specific, that when you see that chicken turn around your head and then you see how they're doing the shita. You should imagine has v'shalom what should be our punishment. And with that, we're going to do repentance. That's the only reason. So the main reason is that today it's most common to bring money and to put it and to give it to anim or to put it in a pushka that later on it will reach to people that need. 
The main reason is, like we explained, that Erev Yom Kibur, there is so much stress, and the Shohet so much in stress to finish that, that he doesn't have a chance. Because during the day, from the morning to the evening, it just stress. So, Hazal said to us today, our sages also say to us today, rather, if you can do it, and that's what the Maran, and the Shulchan Aruch Pasken, that you can do it with with guilt. Now the value. What is the value? What is the value? You can't take one rain and give. So you have to understand, when you give, you have to give something that value to a meal. And I mentioned it the other day. What is the value of a meal? It's at least 20 rain. You can buy a pie for 20 rain. I think that one pie will fill up an individual, normal individual. So if it costs 20 rain, you take 20 rain per head. What does it mean per head? Per person. Everyone understand so far before I move? Okay? So if the member of the family, let's say the father and the wife, that means the husband and the wife too, they have three kids, together they have to put <coughs> 100 rand. You do it individually, at least 20 rand. You want to do 50 rand, it's even better because this money going for tzedakah. You put 50 ren or 20 ren at least over the head of a person. That's an average meal today. I don't know what cause. Uh, what, what, what is the price of a normal shawarma? How much is a chicken shawarma or chicken? Anyone have any idea? Just quick. 100 ren for shawarma? No, no, no. Sorry? 50? Sorry? Okay, so, so at least 50 ren. Let's put it 50 ren because 20 ren sounds to be a bit more. Shvach, you know what I'm saying? You can't give. Uh, it's nish gefelach, you know, that's daka, and we say it's daka tatil mi mavet, if you can give at least 50 rand ahead, nothing wrong with that. Okay, then we have one more important thing that we have to remember, that this mitzvah, that eating, even a person, listen to that, Rabotai, that not obligated to eat on Yom Kippur, that's me, that he got a permission from a doctor that he's not allowed to fast, still obligated to eat and to drink Erev Yom Kippur. Do you understand that? How important that mitzvah? Okay, on Erev Yom Kippur, there is a custom not to do any melacha, not to work, or if you're obligated to go and work, you do it as as much less that you can, to work as short as you can. That's Erev Yom Kippur. And the last one that I want to speak about, Minhag. Now, this is a Minhag. It's not a mitzvah. There is no use to go and fight over it. It's a Minhag to go to the mikveh. Everyone know what is it, a mikveh, no? Yeah. Okay. People think that it's an obligation to go to the mikveh. No. It's not an obligation. It's not a mitzvah. It's minhag hasidut. And what's happening if a person can't? For some reason, he feels like he can't get to... Uh, anyway, how many of you gone out of Yom Kippur to a mikveh? It looks like a mud bar, some of them. Unfortunately. Do you know? So, a person that can't go there... Menachem, you're laughing. Huh? I saw them, you know. I have, in the past, I have to clean some of those mikvahot, you know. Mm -hmm. I've done the cleaning, to refilling, to make sure that it's... And all Erev Yom Kippur, when we all stress, is to clean them up, to make sure that they're ready for the ladies to come after the men. And I saw how it looked after that. It wasn't nice. So, and, and it happened once that I saw a man, and he said to me, I'm not, I came to dunk, but look at that water. I looked at them, I didn't have nothing to say. It's happened, you know, there's, there's hundreds of people walking into one small little pool. Okay. So why am I saying not to fight? One year, a person came half an, half an hour later after we allowed the men to come into the mikvah because we use a ladies' mikvah, and we closed it half an hour after. And we already start to empty. We put all the machine to empty the water, to pump it. We have to make sure there's no maim zohalim, to dry it, everything. We have to clean it. So Motzei Yom Kippur, the lady already can use it. We have to heat the water, you must understand. It wasn't simple. And the guy starts performing and screaming and shouting. 
like his life depending on it. You're not obligated. There's no mitzvah, the oraita, to go to the mikvah. It's a minhag. If a person can't, for all different reasons, like a brought, if he feels not comfortable to go there, whatever the case is, he can stand after, underneath the shower, okay? And you have to realize that, or value, that at least 12 and a half liter of water pouring on him. That means tisha kabim. 12 and a half liter, and it's making no different cold or hot water, as long as he feels that it's been poured 12 and a half liter. 12 and a half liter, it's really not a lot. For those that understand value, it's nothing. A small bucket, it's already nine liter. So, just to value nine, and, so 12 and a half liter, that's Tisha Akabi. Those the Minhagim of Erev Yom Kippur, there is more, but I don't want to get into it. I want to move on to Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, anyone know? It's Yud Tishrei, nachon? Nachon. The question become, now I'm going to go back to what we say. Why are we obligated to eat so much on Erev Yom Kippur? And I'm going to link it to Yom Kippur for us to understand. The Torah tells us in Sefer Vaikra, chapter 23, like this, ve'initem et nafshotechem betish'a lachodesh ba'erev. That means that on the nine of Tishrei, okay, you obligated to fast. Doesn't make sense, nachon, nomen? You heard that yesterday, remember? So how come that the Torah tell us on the nine, we know it's yud, it's ten. So to understand that, you have to go to the Gemara. The Gemara in Masechet Brachot, Daf Het Amud Bet, and the Gemara tell us from that Pasuk and Sefer Vaikra, we're learning that a person, listen to that, that fast, sorry, that eat Erev Yom Kippur on the nine of Tishrei and fast on Yom Kippur, listen what Hazal say. That kol ha'ochel v'shote ma'ale alav ha'katuv ki ilu tsam tshi'i v'asiri. That means that he fasts two days. That if we eat on Erev Yom Kippur this Friday and we fast Saturday, it's considered to us like we fasted two days. Do you understand that? So the Mefarshim ask why. There's many explanations. I'm going to bring two quick, quick two. You wanted to ask something? No? So the Mefarshim explain why do we obligate it to eat. So the Hazal bring one opinion, like if a king have a son, and he know that the next morning he need to go for a treatment, and he's not allowed to eat in the morning if they need to, take, to count his blood, if there is a problem with that, you're not allowed to eat from the morning, Therefore, you should eat before to be strong so you can fast. The other opinion say, no, it's exactly the opposite. When you eat too much, it's very difficult. You find the fast very difficult. It's two, two different opinions. But the most important thing is that we're obligated to eat. Okay, so we say that the villa, we explain all the halachot so far. Now I'm going to start with Lel Kippur. Lel Kippur, it's Kippur night when we're starting. Okay, in Kippur night, if you look at uh, Mahzor, I don't know how many of you read through the Mahzor, and I would recommend to everyone just look at it. We start with something very interesting. Before we start Kol Nidre, we say, Or zaru alay tzadik ul yishirelef simha. And immediately after that, we say something very interesting. Kam Rabbi Shimon, Salik, we say a special thing. In Aramaic, that Rabbi Shimon tell us to say, "Kam Rabbi Shimon." What it means, "Kam Rabbi Shimon"? Rabbi Shimon stood up, and it's all in Aramaic. Just before we start, call Nidre. <coughs> Hazal explained to us that the main reason to it, and this come on the Gemara Masechet Baba Batra, why we say that portion in Aramaic. The Gemara said it. The story become about Rabbi Hanina, 
בר חמא. רבי חנינא בר חמא, one day was walking אצל, היה מהלך במדבר. What it means במדבר? In a place that there is no people. ושמע בת קול אומרת, and he hear a voice saying, what it was saying, the Gemara tell us there, according to the Gemara said that they, he hear the voice that saying like this, אוי לי שנדרתי, ועכשיו שנדרתי, מי יתיר לי את נדרי? That means that he hear a voice that saying, I took on myself a vow. Now that I took on myself this vow, who gonna do the announcement of the vow for me. He didn't understand the word. When he entered the Beit HaMidrash, the Gemara tell us that he told the story to Hachamim, to the sages. And Hachamim said to him, if you would say three times, Mufar Lecha, Mufar Lecha, Mufar Lecha, the Mashiach would come. What does it mean, Mufar Lecha? Anyone understand what does it mean? That if you would say, Mufar, that you remember we do Erev Rosh Hashanah and Erev Yom Kippur, the announcement of the vow. Remember? So he should say, Mufar Lecha. That means everything is okay. He do like he said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hazal explained to him that if you would say it three times, the Mashiach would come. Why? Because if you have the schut, the merit to hear that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to do for him the announcement of the vow. So what is the connection? Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai told us that, that we should say it, that we should say it in Aramic, Dafka. Dafka in a time, when do we say it? Just before Kol Nidre. What is Kol Nidre? Did you ask yourself what Kol Nidre mean? What is Kol Nidre mean? Kol Nidre. All different vow. Nachon? All different vow. So he said, Dafka Kadosh, sorry. Hazal tell us dafka to do it then. Why? That we should say that pasuk, this verse from the Zohar, that we should have in mind that the same like HaKadosh Baruch Hu took us and took on himself to put us in the diaspora. And he wants someone to do for him the announcement of the vow. And if we say that, we give an HaKadosh Baruch Hu petah to forgive for all our sins. And dafka Erev Yom Kippur. Later on we say, בישיבה של מעלה ובישיבה של מטה ועל דעת המקום. I'm going to explain that. I'm going to get to that also. What it means בישיבה של מעלה? Did you ask yourself what it means בישיבה של מעלה? בישיבה של, uh, של מעלה? בישיבה של מעלה it means an authority of the, court, the highly court of heaven. בישיבה של מעלה. Why do we say that? Why do we mention the court of the highly court of heaven? Did you ask yourself, what's the connection? So I see the explanation that Hazal bring that, and I brought a special thing that's Rabbi Haim Palaji. Rabbi Haim Palaji wrote a book, Mo'ed Lekol Hai. We brought his history. He born in Izmir. You remember we mentioned that? Rabbi Haim Palaji said in his book, when we say bishiva shel mal, when we say that, if a human being have eyes to see, they would see that the angel up of heaven coming down to earth and sitting on top of the Echal HaKodesh, on top of the ark. And they davening for us that we should have a blessed year. So we see that we're getting extra force from heaven to come and help us. Bishiva shel mata, with the authority of the court of the earthly. What does that mean? So the Gemara in Masechet Kritut, Daf Vav Amud Be, that means the Gemara in Kritut, Vav, page two, tell us something like this. Kol ta'anit, she'en ba mi posh'e Yisrael, and not ta'anit. That means that if there is a ta'anit, like we have in Yom Kippur, that's considered a Tanit. And Pusha Israel, that means that people that do Averot, that make sin. If they don't join us on that Tanit, HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't accept it. And not Tanit. 
Can you believe it? Why do we need those people that sin to come with us? Did you ask yourself? Anyone have any idea? <coughs> sorry, sorry? Call Israel Aravim Zelazeh, exactly. And so? So maybe the, maybe the, the merits of, the, of, of, the, of, of all the people who, who didn't sin so much will, will, will help the people who sin. Okay. All what you say is perfect. But let me explain it to you. You know about the spices that the Kohen Gadol used to bring on Yom Kippurim, you remember? <coughs> Only on Yom Kippur used to bring the special spices. <laughs> what was among those? Ahad Asar Samemanim, amongst those 11? Anyone remember? The Helbona. The Helbona, her sting was so bad that Hazal tell us if we wouldn't put that bad smell into it, why do we need a bad smell? Rather leave all good smell. No. You need the bad smell because the Kadosh Baruch Hu wants you to understand. Call Israel Aravim Laze. Zelazeh, that means bring also those that doesn't know, bring those ones that so far, from far away, that doesn't understand nothing about Yiddishkeit. Bring them with you. And your tefillot, and they tefillot together, will come in the front of the Almighty like the spices with a good smell. Be shiva shel mata, that means to us, that we obligated to bring with us a person or people that you know that they sin, and explain to him how important is it. And there it says, Al da'at in, in the fort of the Almighty. What's the connection? The, to understand that, I, I, I at the beginning couldn't understand that, that. But to understand that, I read the book that the Mekubalim wrote. <coughs> And I couldn't understand, because I'm not a Mekubal, but I needed to understand, so I've gone to sources. And on one of the sources, one of the Rabonim explained it. And he explained it. That all year around, we davening to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu given us Yom Kippur, and we see what's the most important thing on Yom Kippur, that he given us a chance. That on Yom Kippur, that we all gonna gather together, and we daven, and we have a chance to fix all of those tefillot that we didn't daven with Kavana all year around on Yom Kippur. Al da'at makom. That if you focus on Yom Kippur with the davani, you can actually fix all the tefillot that you wasn't mekaven all year around. <coughs> and who can say that he was mekaven all year? How many of us can say? So that's al da'at makom. Let's move on. We said that this very important thing. Anyone know what's the most important thing on Yom Kippur? Not to eat. Sorry? Not to eat. Okay. Sorry? That's it. The confession. The vidui. Akadosh Baruch Hu wants us to do a confession. He given us a chance to have another year, a special day that we'll do confession. You know how many confessions we do on Yom Kippur? Ten. Who said ten? Shukra. On Yom Kippur, we do ten confessions. Did you know that? No. Ten confessions we do on Yom Kippur. And what is the most important thing that we have to be mekaven? When you do the, the vidui, the confession, you have to think very simple <coughs> thing about all the sin that you remember from the day that you're born to that day, sure. all the sins that you've done. And even if you don't remember, there's many sins that we've done and we don't remember. Nahon? You know. agree with it? Or you don't want to remember, but you remind yourself. But even if you don't remember, you take on yourself, I would say just tell us, think about from the day of the creation of the world until today. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgive Please forgive for all my sin from the day that the, of the creation. That's the about the vidui. Oh, and why is so important? Why is it so important the vidui? Anyone have any idea? Why is it so important? I almost jumped to that. So the radak. Anyone heard about the radak? Radak 
wrote, you read about it, shukra. The Radak, by the way, before Akiryon, Rabbi David Kimhi. Rabbi David Kimhi born 854 years ago, he born in France. And he wrote a commentary on Enach. And he's, in his commentary about the Vidui, he explained that the most important thing when we do the Vidui, that we have to have this thought that we ask Akadosh Baruch Hu to forgive all our sin to become closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Why? Because we're going to regret what we've done. We ask him to forgive. So if he's going to forgive us, we ask to become closer to him. Now I'm going to get to Kol Nidre. And we're going to explain what Kol Nidre. Kol Nidre. Anyone have any idea why we say Kol Nidre before I start in Aramaic? That's the last chance you've got to... to no, but why in language of Aramaic? There's a lot of Hebrew. Bishiva Shel Ma'ala, it's in Hebrew. That's what everybody understood, you know, when it was written. No, you know, you, you took that idea, that's the idea that about the Haggadah, you remember we spoke about it? Halachman, yeah, why did they say it? No, no, no. Here's a bit different. We said, yeah, sure. That's it, yes. So if they don't understand Aramaic, very good. But why? Why we say it in our, uh, we saying it especially in Aramaic, so the angels, we'll see which angel is that. <laughs> we don't want him to understand, but why? What is called Nidre? Kol Nidre we mentioning about all the vow that we took on ourselves. And we said Dafka in Aramaic, that the angel that we created from our sin, so that's what we call it, not the nice friends, they stopping all the prosperity from coming down. And they're standing in the front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and saying, listen, you want to give that guy life? He done this sin, he done that sin. How can you give him anything? So we're saying it in a different language that they wouldn't understand that we're referring to all the sins that we've done, all the vow that we took on ourselves. And we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to forgive us. And that, again, remember, that's mitzvah, ben adam, la makom. Yom kipuri mechaper, that means that the Yom Kippur only mechaper about the sin between us and the Almighty. But ben adam la havero, that means between us to our fellow friend, Yom kipur meno mechaper. What does it mean? That if you're not going to go and ask your friend for forgiveness, Yom HaKippurim is not going to help. You have to ask your friend. So when we say, Kol Nidre, on Yom Kippur, on Yom Kippur, we have to remember that we say it in Aramaic, we have to be Mekaven for all the vow, all different things that we took on himself, even if we didn't mean it. We've done it three times, it's like a hazaka. When a person do the same thing three times, remember we spoke about it once, there is a hazaka. Even that he didn't mean it, it's considered like a vow. You have to have it in mind. And we ask a Kadosh Baruch Hu to forgive us for all of this. Sefer Kol Nidre, the book of Kol Nidre, everyone know about it. What is it so important? If you take notice, the Sefer Kol Nidre, we don't read from the Sefer. We don't open it, we don't read it. Not like any other book, any other Sefer Torah that we take. When we take Sefer Torah and we bring it up there, we read from it, nachon? Sefer Kol Nidre, we never, nachon? You agree with me? We just hold it. So I'll tell you what's the difference. That when we take the Sefer Nidre, Kol Nidre, why do we have to say Sefer Torah first? To remind us, to remind us. And we're saying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we accepted your Torah. We human beings. We're not angel. We human beings. And not only that we human beings, but we accepted your Torah. Please, remember us. Remember our father that stood on Mount Sinai. And in the merit of them, 
that accept the Torah, please forgive us for all our sin. There's another opinion that when a person sees Sefer Torah, he starts shaking, his heart starts beeping. And that will help him to do tshuva. Now this very important thing that we have to do with the Sefer Torah, and with that I'm going to conclude. When a person walks with Sefer Kol Nidre, try to hold it with two hands and try to give it seven kisses. Two hands and kisses seven times. Why? The Mekubalim explain every kiss that you do, and you have to do it seven times, it's to forgive us for the most common sin that a person has, Zera Lebatala. Everyone know what does it mean? You want to explain that, Stephen? Maybe say it loudly. Wasting? Yeah. When a person wa wastes his seed by mistake, everyone understand me? Yes. These people that don't. It's very common for us. We're all human beings. It's come to tell us that that Avon Karet, by you doing his seven kisses, you're fixing all of that Avon Karet by holding it with two hands and kissing it. So when the person that have the honor to carry the sefer called Nidre, try to get hold of it. Any questions just before we finish? There is more. I prepared two pages. We didn't manage because the time is too short. We're going to say Kaddish.